insolent child. You shall pay dearly for your disrespect. Still, to honor your Cooper ancestry, I will send you to your doom with the beauty of my new firework technique, Flame Foo. Danger Doe. The third member of the Fiendish Five was the infamous voodoo priestess, Ms. Ruby. I could feel that Cooper vibe coming. Most distastefully bad juju. Certainly got some rhythm, Raccoon. But it won't help you none if you're fixing to go after the Panda King. He's tough. With a capital T. You go poking around his stronghold in China, you're likely to get poked back. The road trip gave me the time I needed to study up on the Panda King. Rest in peace, Bruce Lee. Rest in peace. Born penniless, he was fascinated by the fireworks rich noblemen set off every New Year's. He spent a decade learning the art. But when he tried to offer his fireworks to the noblemen, they couldn't see past his shabby clothes and chased him away. Humiliated, the Panda King took revenge on those who shunned him by using the very tools of his art for crime. What a surprise! Some nobleman piss off a commoner, and he takes revenge on them. And you gotta admire the Panda King. He spent an entire decade on learning how to make fireworks, and that is a tricky craft, and very dangerous, mind you. And, uh, I gotta say, he kinda deserves it. He kinda deserves taking revenge on noble people who very clearly do not know talent when they see it. So the sin here is for the nobleman, not the Panda King. Wait, his name is Kung Pao? Is that racist? I don't know if that's racist. Is it racist if you're named after a food dedicated to your country? Like if some man is na- What am I saying? Punch-Out made a living on that kind of stuff. Like with pizza pasta from Super Punch-Out. Is he okay? He's frozen stiff. Oh, he likes world soccer. That's neat. <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. Andre the Giant and- What's the other guy's name? Sly, zoom in on it. More. More. Ninor Zoom. Wonton? Wonton? Are you kidding me? Who knew Slice Cane was a source of ignition? How else is he lighting up these fireworks and Roman rockets with just one swipe of his cane? Why is it in Panda King's first level, and only his first level, that you're not specifically told what your previous boss encounter got you? Like, I figured it out because I did it by accident that I could turn invisible. What the hell? Did General Sal have plastic surgery between games? Like, how'd he go from an ape to a chicken? And really, dude? You had to put you have hairy palms in your resume for the Panda King? No one needs to know that. Yep, that ape just killed off all his buddies and then got all cocky when he thought he killed the raccoon. It's a star scream if I've ever seen one. What the heck, the Lucky Charm still exists even after I die when I collected a hundred? And it just sits there. This might be the absolutely worst protected treasure key I have ever seen. Not Mugshot's jewel case on a random rooftop. Not Miss Ruby, oh, just let a ghost take it. No, it's out here, sitting on the cold, hard ground. This just gets better and better. I'd always heard that one of your southern ancestors, Huckleberry Cooper, developed a technique 
to move while staying invisible. Hold down the circle button to turn invisible, then move around with the left analog stick. Not one stage in and Slight and Common's invisibility has already been overshadowed. And it actually makes sense that a character based on Huckleberry Finn would have the ability to move while staying invisible. Like, <laughs> considering what Huckleberry Finn is known for. Nice job breaking into the Panda King's compound! I think I've figured out a way to get to the top of that giant statue. But unfortunately, it's obstructed by this reinforced ceiling hatch. No problem. They seem to have plenty of firepower around here. I'll just have to find a few more treasure keys to get at it. How exactly are those treasure key locks keeping the fireworks from being lit? I mean, if they were locked inside a cabinet and then we broke it open once we got all three keys, then they ignited, that made more sense. This looks like a good place to try out your new invisibility move. Hold down the circle button to drop out of sight. While invisible, nothing can see you. Not lasers, not searchlights, not guards. Oh, and if the guards already see you, then the invisibility trick won't work on them. Well, thank God for all these for no reason existing conveyor belts. Why are they here? They're only here to benefit me, apparently. There's no point to them being here. They're not even transporting fireworks. Mr. Sesame Chicken over here sees two clue bottles break and doesn't even react. Her name is Chow Main? What I expect from guys who are basically named after food. Ah, fuck it, I'm hungry now. Where's my phone? I gotta dial up some dumplings. I'll give Panda King this. No one would ever find this vault. <laughs> Who'd look for a giant heavy-ass vault on top of a pagoda of all things? It was a challenge, but this vault's combination has got to be six, six, seven. Incredible! I never would have thought this was possible. Sir Augustine of Cooper's technique to briefly defy gravity. From now on, you should be able to pop right out of those bottomless pits you keep falling into. I mean, in all honesty, they're not exactly bottomless pits. They're just drops that would be instantly fatal if it actually you know, fell in, and defying gravity. A Cooper figured out how to give the finger to gravity and pull a Bugs Bunny. Doubting any more that this book is dangerous, are you? God thou shall be with one read from this paged book. Bentley. It's a Chinese temple. Like in Wu-Tang vs Shaolin or Golden Arms, isn't that pretty much what happens in the temple? You train to become a martial art badass? These guys are so focused on their training that they didn't even notice that I killed one of their buddies. Lucky for you I burst in chaos theory, otherwise this code would have been unsolvable. Bentley? What the fuck does that even mean? I've calculated the trajectory of these rockets, and I'm 99% sure you'll be able to ride them all the way to the top of that statue before they explode. Mm. What about that other 1%? Well, in that case, Sly, you will be blown to bits. But the experience will no doubt be spectacular. Nice. Gee, Bentley, thanks. I'm all up for climbing on that rocket to fly up there now. What are, you, what are you doing down there? Well, I'm minding my post when I notice a snow cone stand and I think to myself, Hey, Murray, you gotta keep your energy up. Who the fuck eats snow cones when it's already cold out? Like, out of all the things on top of this mountain, it could have been, like, Szechuan Mapu Tofu. It could have been lo mein, chicken chow mein. Uh, any of those other things you order from Chinese restaurant that are actually good. And actually worth getting in the middle of a blizzard on top of a mountain. So I hurry over here and then all of a sudden, monkeys are everywhere! Bugging me to race them three times around this track for a key! 
The way Murray says it, it sounds like the monkeys were fucking bored and were like, Oh, what the hell, we'll put up the key as a prize. What can happen? Okay, I don't know where I got bottomless pits in the Sunset Snake Eyes video, but I must have mistaken it for icy patches, and you know, it actually makes the level kind of fun. Like, yeah, it's the same problems. They have a normal top speed higher than you, so that what means they're always going faster by default. But with the icy patches, they're more likely to mess up. Meaning you're more likely to get ahead. In fact, on this level, I was consistently playing at least third, where previously I was always in fifth. It did take me a while, but not nearly as long as uh, the mugshot level. Again, Sly, we're racing on dangerous, icy roads. Um, you could go down there, get the damn key yourself while we're distracting the monkeys. Honestly, I don't know why you're sitting on your ass in the cold, doing nothing while Murray tries to get the key. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a disembodied voice from another dimension who's just judging you on everything you do in your life. Freeze, raccoon! How can I freeze when my heart warms at the very sight of you? Shut up, Ringtail. I don't know what you're doing here in China. But I'm sure it can't be good for whoever owns this place. You must only have what? Eyes for me if you're too blind. You don't know Panda King's living here? You did you not know that any of the other villains were where we found them? I mean, I assume you read Sly's file, therefore you knew of the Fiendish Five and where they were likely to be because they had their own Interpol files, but I guess you're just blindly following Sly and just like, oh, hey, there's an internationally wanted criminal. I should take him into custody. I'm proud to be a thief. Especially when I'm stealing from a vicious extortionist like the Panda King. Open your eyes, detective. These quaint temples are a front for an illegal explosives factory. Don't try to confuse the issue. You criminals are all the same, and none of you can escape justice. I mean, yeah, Sly's still breaking the law by stealing stuff, but, um... Panda King's killing people. In fact, I'm pretty sure all the Fiendish Five have killed people. There's a difference between soft criminal and hard criminal. Thief is less bad than murder, Carmelita. Wait, holy shit. Was Carmelita always built like a Pixar mom? I mean, just look at her. It's so thick. That's not your ordinary everyday two C's thick. That's like, uh, extra thick. Yeah, I mean, this girl is like thick with a capital damn. This is oddly mellow music, considering I'm being chased by Furry Bait with a shock pistol, who is out to get me and doesn't seem to understand that there's a murderer in this area. Unfortunately, this vault code appears to have been written in owl dialect. I won't be able to crack the code until we meet and defeat the bird who created it. Okay, first, owls have their own language in the Sly Cooper universe? And second, that means Clockwork only took like two pages out of the book. Again, he probably didn't need them, but why only two pages? We don't even know what the other page was that he took. This vehicle is identical to the one you found in Ms. Ruby's lair. Someone with some serious high-tech skills must be providing these guys with hardware. The fifth member of the Fiendish Five, perhaps? Remember, this legitimately was the only other time that Clockwork is mentioned outside of his own level. And considering I think Panda King's level was supposed to be the first, it kind of makes me want the Fiendish Five to like talk about Clockwork when Sly beats them, like bigging him up as this unfeeling, cold machine of logic that is devoid of all emotion, like really play into how monstrous he is. Instead of them not knowing when to shut up and ratting out the next member, for instance. Why am I firing a high-energy blasting vehicle inside a fireworks production facility? You all seen cartoons, you know what happens when there's a single spark from a random thing in a firework factory. Why should you care if I bury a few worthless village in snow? You are a thief just like me. No, that's only half right. I am a thief from a long line of master thieves, while you, you're just a frustrated firework artist turned homicidal pyromaniac. I do wonder what made Panda King go from taking revenge on the nobles who shunned him 
to becoming what is essentially a Chinese mafia mob boss, extorting people for avalanche insurance for avalanches he causes. Insolent child, you shall pay dearly for your disrespect. Still, to honor your Cooper ancestry, I will send you to your doom with the beauty of my new firework technique, Flame Foo. We interrupt this episode of Sly Cooper to bring you Kung Fu Panda. A frustrated Inspector Fox, having missed me coming down the mountain. After you blew her, her tatas, and her thick cheeks down the mountain off a dragon statue. Never forget that, Sly. Threw the Panda King in jail, thus putting an end to his avalanche protection services. Okay, we all get it. Daily Sucker Punch is horny, but I didn't know you could curse on a newspaper. Also, come on, O'Reilly, it can't be that hard to catch him. Yes. Yes, it is. He is a thieving god, considering what that book teaches him. Okay, partner, this is it! A trip to Clockwork's lair! Okay, partner.